Cluster decay, also named heavy particle radioactivity or heavy ion radioactivity, is a type of nuclear decay in which an atomic nucleus emits a small cluster of neutrons and protons more than in an alpha particle, but less than a typical binary fission fragment. Ternary fission into three fragments also produces products in the cluster size. The loss of protons from the parent nucleus changes it to the nucleus of a different element, the daughter, with a mass number ad equals a, a an atomic number z, d equals z, z where a equals ni plus z, for example, 223.88 ra 14.6 c plus 209.82 petabits This type of rare decay mode was observed in radioisotopes that decay predominantly by alpha emission, and it occurs only in a small percentage of the decays for all such isotopes. The branching ratio with respect to alpha decay is rather small. Tar and Tc are the half-lives of the parent nucleus relative to alpha decay and cluster radioactivity, respectively. Cluster decay, like alpha decay, is a quantum tunneling process. In order to be emitted, the cluster must penetrate a potential barrier. This is a different process than the more random nuclear disintegration that precedes light fragment emission in ternary fission, which may be a result of a nuclear reaction, but can also be a type of spontaneous radioactive decay in certain nuclides, demonstrating that input energy is not necessarily needed for fission, which remains a fundamentally different process mechanistically. Theoretically any nucleus with Z greater than 40 for which the released energy is a positive quantity can be a cluster emitter. In practice, observations are severely restricted to limitations imposed by currently available experimental techniques which require a sufficiently short half-life, Tc less than 1032 s, and a sufficiently large branching ratio B greater than 10 minus 17. In the absence of any energy loss for fragment deformation and excitation, as in cold fission phenomena or in alpha decay, the total kinetic energy is equal to the Q value and is divided between the particles in inverse proportion with their masses as required by conservation of linear momentum where ad is the mass number of the daughter, ad equals a, a, cluster decay exists in an intermediate position between alpha decay and spontaneous fission, in which a heavy nucleus splits into two large fragments and an assorted number of neutrons. Spontaneous fission ends up with a probabilistic distribution of daughter products, which sets it apart from cluster decay. In cluster decay for a given radioisotope, the emitted particle is a light nucleus and the decay method always emits this same particle. For heavier emitted clusters there is otherwise practically no qualitative difference between cluster decay and spontaneous cold fission. History the first information about the atomic nucleus was obtained at the beginning of the 20th century by studying radioactivity. For a long period of time only three kinds of nuclear decay modes were known. They illustrate three of the fundamental interactions in nature, strong, weak, and electromagnetic. Spontaneous fission became popular soon after its discovery in 1940 by K. Petterzak and G. Flair owing to both military and peaceful applications of neutron-induced fission discovered in 1939 by Otto Hahn, Lise Meitner, and Fritz Strassmann, employing the large amount of energy released during the process. There are many other kinds of radioactivity, e.g., cluster decay, proton decay, various beta-delayed decay modes, fission isomers, particle-accompanied fission, etc. The height of the potential barrier, mainly of Coulomb nature, for emission of the charged particles is much higher than the observed kinetic energy of the emitted particles. The spontaneous decay can only be explained by quantum tunneling in a similar way to the first application of the quantum mechanics to nuclei given by G. Gamow for alpha decay. In 1980 A. Sandulescu, D. N. Pinaru, and W. Greiner described calculations indicating the possibility of a new type of decay of heavy nuclei intermediate between alpha decay and spontaneous. 
fission. The first observation of heavy ion radioactivity was that of a 30 MeV carbon-14 emission from radium-223 by H.J. Rosen G.A. Jones in 1984. Usually the theory explains an already experimentally observed phenomenon. Cluster decay is one of the rare examples of phenomena predicted before experimental discovery. Theoretical predictions were made in 1980, four years before experimental discovery. Four theoretical approaches were used. Fragmentation theory by solving a Schrödinger equation with mass asymmetry as a variable to obtain the mass distributions of fragments, penetrability, calculations similar to those used in traditional theory of alpha decay, and supersymmetric fission models, numerical and analytical. Supersymmetric fission models are based on the macroscopic-microscopic approach using the asymmetrical two-center shell model level energies is Input data for the shell and pairing corrections, either the liquid drop model or the UCAM the plus exponential model extended to different charge to mass ratios have been used to calculate the macroscopic deformation energy. Penetrability theory predicted eight decay modes. 14 C, 24 Ni, 28 megagrams, 32, 34 C, 46 R, and 48, 50 California from the following parent nuclei, 222,224 R, 230,232 TH, 236,238 U, 244,246 Pu, 248 8,250 cm, 250,252 cf, 252,254 fm, and 252,254 no. The first experimental report was published in 1984, when physicists at Oxford University discovered that 223 Ra emits 114 C nucleus out of every billion alpha decays. Theory. The quantum tunneling may be calculated either by extending fission theory to a larger mass asymmetry or by heavier emitted particle from alpha decay. Theory. Both fission-like and alpha-like approaches are able to express the decay constant equals lane 2 Tc as a product of three model-dependent quantities whereas the frequency of assaults on the barrier per second. S is the preformation probability of the cluster at the nuclear surface, and P is the penetrability of the external barrier. In alpha-like theories S is an overlap integral of the wave function of the three partners. In efficient theory the preformation probability is the penetrability of the internal part of the barrier from the initial turning point V to the touching point RT. Very frequently it is calculated by using the wenzel kramers brillo an approximation. A very large number of the order 105 of parent-emitted cluster combinations were considered in a systematic search for new decay modes. The model was the first to be used to predict measurable quantities in cluster decay. More than 150 cluster decay modes have been predicted before any other kind of half-lives calculations have been reported. Comprehensive tables of half-lives, branching ratios, and kinetic energies have been published, e.g., potential barrier shapes similar to that considered within the ASAF model have been calculated by using the macroscopic-microscopic method. Previously it was shown that even alpha decay may be considered a particular case of cold fission. The ASAF model may be used to describe in a unified manner cold alpha decay, cluster decay, and cold fission. One can obtain with good approximation one universal curve for any kind of cluster decay mode with a mass number A, including alpha decay in a logarithmic scale. The equation log t equals f represents a single straight line which can be conveniently used to estimate the half-life. A single universal curve for alpha decay in cluster decay modes results by expressing log t plus log s equals f. The experimental data on cluster decay in three groups of even-even, even-odd, and odd-even parent nuclei are reproduced with comparable accuracy by both types of universal curves.
fission-like univernew DL derived using alpha Lipar matrix theory. In order to find the released energy one can use the compilation of measured masses M, M, D, and me of the parent, daughter, and emitted nuclei. C is the light velocity. The mass excess is transformed into energy according to the Einstein's formula E equals mc2. Experiments The main experimental difficulty in observing cluster decay comes from the need to identify a few rare events among an enormous number of background alpha particle. The quantities experimentally determined are the partial half-life Tc and the kinetic energy of the emitted cluster Ec. There is also a need to identify the emitted particle. Detection of radiations is based on their interactions with matter, leading mainly to ionizations. Using a semiconductor telescope and conventional electronics to identify the 14 C ions. The Rose and Jones as experiment was running for about six months in order to get 11 useful events. With modern magnetic spectrometers at Orsay and Argon National Laboratory, a very strong source could be used, so that results were obtained in a run of few hours. Solid-state nuclear track detectors insensitive to alpha particles and magnetic spectrometers in which alpha particles have deflected by a strong magnetic field have been used to overcome this difficulty. SSNTD are cheap and handy but they need chemical etching and microscope scanning. A key role in experiments on cluster decay modes performed in Berkeley, or say, Dubna, and Milano played P. Buford Price, Eid Hurani, Michelle Hisona, Svetlana Trechikova, A. O. Globlin, Roberto Bonetti, and their co-workers. The main region of 20 emitters experimentally observed until 2010 is above Z equals 86, 221 FR, 221 minus 224,226 RA, 223,225 AC, 228,230 th 231 Pascals, 230,232, 236 U, 236,238 PU, and 242 CM. Only upper limits could be detected in the following cases. 12C decay of 114 bar, 15N decay of 223 AC, 18O decay of 226, 24, 26 NE decays of 232 TH and of 236 U, 28 megagrams decays of 232 million 233,235 U, 30 megagrams decay of 237 NEPAS and 34C decay of 240 Pu and of 241 Nam. Some of the cluster emitters are members of the three natural radioactive families. Others should be produced by nuclear reactions. Up to now no odd emitter has been observed. From many decay modes with half-lives and branching ratios relative to alpha decay predicted with the analytical supersymmetric fission model, the following 11 have been experimentally confirmed. 14C, 20O, 23F, 22, 24-26 Ni, 28, 30 megagrams, and 32, 34C. The experimental data are in good agreement with predicted values. A strong shell effect can be seen. As a rule the shortest value of the half-life is obtained when the daughter nucleus has a magic number of neutrons and or protons. The known cluster emissions is of 2010 or as follows. Fine structure. The fine structure in 14C radioactivity of 223 Ra was discussed for the first time by M. Greiner and W. Scheid in 1986. The superconducting spectrometer SOLENO of IPN also has been used since 1984 to identify 14 C clusters emitted from 222 minus 224,226 Ra nuclei. Moreover it was used to discover the fine structure observing transitions to excited states of the daughter, a transition with an excited state of 14C predicted in REF. 24 was not yet observed. 
Surprisingly, the experimentalists had seen a transition to the first excited state of the daughter stronger than that to the ground state. The transition is favored if the uncoupled nucleon is left in the same state in both parent and daughter nuclei. Otherwise the difference in nuclear structure leads to a large hindrance. The interpretation was confirmed. The main spherical component of the deformed parent wave function has an I11 halves character, i.e., the main component is spherical.